Good morning. I'm glad you joined us for this time of devotion. You know, I never take my McLaren 750S out of the garage. It's too expensive to drive and it's too risky. It also doesn't handle the potholes in Johannesburg's roads very well. And I can dream, can't I? It's the same problem the Royal Navy has with its aircraft carriers. Thanks to the generosity of my son-in-law and a ticket held over from the COVID restrictions, I was able to visit the UK twice last year, first in the English summer and then over Christmas. In August, we went to the Portsmouth Historical Harbour to explore Nelson's HMS Victory. And the Queen Elizabeth and Prince of Wales aircraft carriers were in port. Stunning to see these ships moored one behind the other, the biggest ships ever built in Britain. And they were having their flight decks resurfaced due to the heat of the jets as they took off and landed. And then at Christmas we went back to Portsmouth Uh, to explore the the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's favourite ship. And both of the aircraft carriers were there again. And apparently they had both been to sea, because I commented on that, that they they don't seem to go out. And no, 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 I was told they've both been to sea. uh, But they were back in the port. And then the Houthi rebels in Yemen started attacking shipping in the Red Sea. And British reprisal raids by the RAF were carried out using long-range strike aircraft rather than sending an aircraft carrier. And like my McLaren in its garage, it's too risky and too expensive to take these aircraft carriers out to sea. An aircraft carrier at sea needs a whole flotilla with it to protect and give it support. The whole nature of warfare has changed. You no longer look an opponent in the eye and thrust your sword into his belly. You sit in a recliner and fly your radio-controlled armed drone into a ship or into a village totally new set of rules of engagement for battle. And so Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, he writes these words, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the whole armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, that all kinds of prayers and requests, and with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. We can't even see our enemy in the struggle that Paul is speaking about. The drone comes out of the sky, out of the sky and it zaps us. And that verse 12 always sounds so sinister, doesn't it? So dark. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, 
and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It is so dark. It is so dark. It is so sinister. And then in verses 13 through to 17, Paul talks about this armor of God, the things that we need to put on the belt and the breastplate and, and the sword and, and all the rest of it. The measures we can take to protect ourselves against attack. The flotilla or the keeping of Mike McLaren in the garage that's going to protect what is important to us. But Paul gives a final injunction in verse 18, and I want us to pause there and look at that. He says in verse 18, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for those uh, for all the Lord's people. And always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Are you praying about the warfare that you, your loved ones, your neighbours are involved in? Those nice people at church, you sit next to them, in front of them and behind them. Are you praying for them? They may need your prayers right now, as may those happy friends at the bridge club or at bowls, those colleagues in the office, that homeless person scratching through your garbage, that mother scratching for food to give to her kids, that tzotzi who's watching your house no matter who they, no matter who they are. They're all there. And they're all caught up in the struggle against the powers of darkness and the spiritual forces of evil. The devil is working in their hearts. They are being tempted. They are being caught up in this warfare. And one of them, maybe a loved one, is facing temptation right now and needs a victory. Are you praying for all the Lord's people? Even battleships can't do it alone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We're not, we're not conscious of that warfare, Lord. We, we know that we struggle sometimes and sometimes we're feeling down, and yet your word is telling us that there is a warfare, that there's a spiritual warfare going on, and that there are powers of darkness and there are spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. And Lord, we're not living in heavenly realms. We're just living here in the suburbs. And yet we are still experiencing those attacks by Satan, the doubts, the fears, the anxiety. And we come to you, Lord. And we thank you that we can pray about that. We thank you that there are things we can do that we can put on that full armour of God, that we can stand firm. But we thank you too, Lord, that you have given us a ministry, a ministry of praying for those who are going through that same conflict, a ministry of praying for people who even now are going facing temptation that, like they've never faced it before. It may be substance abuse, uh, substance abuse. It may be, it may be uh, just behavioural problems. Um, it may be depression. And you've given us the ministry of praying for them. Keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. And oh, Lord Jesus, we want to see us all. We want to see our community, our church, our family living in victory as we rise above that, that warfare and the powers of darkness. As we make our stand because we have put on the full armor of God. And so you say, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Oh, Lord, that's where we want to stand, in your mighty power. 
and thank you that you empower us to gain that victory. Find us faithful, we pray. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless you and walk in victory with the Lord. Go well. Oh